morning friends we as spine surgeons deal with a difficult situation we make unhappy patients less unhappy and i feel that we have to learn and that's the only way that we would be able to progress and move through life not just go but grow through life we are a foolish breed we attempt to tackle essentially anterior lesions from behind and vice versa we cause significant disrespect to soft tissues highest disregard for the stabilizing structures of the spine and at times we end up doing more harm than good this is because we deal with mechanics biology and neurology we deal with an interesting subset of patients who come to us and i divide them into three the acquisitive contributive and receptive there are some patients whatever we do they'll always be unhappy then there are the contributive who are happy but they are wanting more and finally we have the receptive patient who propagates your name and fame i strongly recommend that decision making and choice of patients is the most critical success mantra in making unhappy patients less unhappy with spinal ailments we should try and get as many receptive patients and as few acquisitive patients as we can i have evolved and learned from my mistakes and before i unlock and decide to operate and use my instruments i plan to share a presentation which represents the foolishness and the hunger of spine surgeons albert einstein regarded as a genius reviewed and corrected his theory of relativity seven times which means that failure is a stepping stone to success and i look at four basic objectives the purpose of my surgery the planning of my surgery the process of my surgery and precision during my surgery let's begin with the purpose whenever we have decided to take a patient for surgery ask yourself the question is surgery the only option for this particular patient can i make him less unhappy is the risk benefit ratio in his favor if all these are yes then and only then does he need decompression does he need a fusion does he need some deformity correction or does he now need the new kid on the block a replacement having pinpointed which of these four he really needs and it may be more than one please pause a moment and realize and rule out if he is an outlier which means he may be an exception to the rule always remember that the rationale of a surgical decision is not decided by the ringmaster happiest are those patients who buy the operation rather than those to whom you've sold it let them really go through that entire non surgical gamut before they agree for surgery now coming to the second mantra the planning always rule out a latent vitamin d3 or b12 deficiency which is prevalent in our country and adds to the bone pains and the nerve related symptoms never miss out a zero negative spondyloarthropathy which may affect the sacroiliac joints and may mimic a low back issue 
please remember osteoporosis is a silent killer and it hits the surgery much more than you actually can predict correct it wherever possible gout is also a masquerader besides diabetes mellitus and those malingerers coming for workmen compensation wanting certificates not to attend work and it's become more so now in this work from home policy always rule out all medical comorbidities especially things like neurological past parkinsonism syndrome and all these things which affect quality of life and final result of surgery always read the fine print have a detailed history and clinical evaluation and that's the only thing that can differentiate a spinal from a non spinal pathology and an orthopedic from a non orthopedic one all patients with back and neck pain have a functional overlay to a lesser or a greater extent stress fear and anxiety can multiply the problem and we are obliged to correct that before we offer them any surgical intervention finally coming to the process the third mantra take a proper informed consent tell them everything that could go wrong and don't do it just half an hour before the operation do it in your last counseling in the clinic a day or two prior to your surgery let them go home think about it have your entire team give you an opinion what is a team a team is people who together achieve more fine however a team is a set of people who trust each other who take care of each other's backs look for all the operating room readiness is your image in place are your implants there is instrumentation in order if you need neuro monitoring is it available navigation robot post op icu bracing rehabilitation and finally have you preempted the patient for lifestyle modifications and dietary changes in the future having done that you have to decipher the da vinci code of radiology in the lower back please remember there is transition vertebrae lumbarization sacralization l5 l6 does it really matter well it does always insist on a pre operative x ray it's only an x ray that mimics the intra operative cr embarking on a surgery without a plain x ray can be disastrous the pre op x ray matches the intra op cr and you have to count the mobile segments from below and plan the surgery in that google map which is in there something which i have learned over the years and i practice every time have a surgical partner who has an opposing personality someone who can look at situations differently who can smile when you are stressed and someone who has a low pdi this is airline terminology par distance index pilot and copilot they should be friends they should be colleagues they should not be someone above or below but at level so that they can indulge rather than restrain your partner across should have interactive indulgence during the surgery rather than a reactive restraint it's only an indulgent man across the patient who can actually prevent a complication before it occurs so indulge rather than restrain and have a buddy who helps you coming to the final part the precision positioning preparation of skin level marking cm draping and positioning headlight loop microscope drill minimum instruments on the tray favorite instruments of the surgeon to be kept handy avoid fiddle factor let the nurse be the one who's been with you more than once and have all, all your bail out in the or whether it is t seal dura patch flow seal whatever you may need please remember we may be foolish but yet be quiet and notice everything i pad the knees and ankles i secure the foley catheter in the elderly patient keep the abdomen chest and eyes totally free of pressure 
pad all the bony prominences secure the patient firmly to the operating table having done that i mark the level i normally do it on the opposite side with a needle suppose i am doing a left sided l45 my needle will be on the right side of the l45 this gives me an idea where i am and keeps me away from the surgical area having said that you may choose to use infiltration i don't any more but earlier i used to which was saline adrenaline and have adequate draping finally take the leap please remember conventional disc surgery could be either a fenestration discectomy a laminotomy an interlaminar discectomy or a laminectomy whatever it is expose the hemi lamina and i shall give the example of just a micro lumbar decompression expose it use a 1 inch dry roller pack and a good cobs elevator use this versatile micro lumbar retractor originally given to us by mekalof indian versions which are atmanirbal available here approach the ligamentum flavum check the cm before you do anything check and verify with your pre op x ray and your intra op cm that you are on the right level having done that go for the edge of the ligamentum flavum the ligamentum flavum goes and attaches below the overhanging lamina you may choose to take off a little bit with the kerosene ronger or go in with that small ao type of periosteal elevator and detach the ligamentum flavum having done that you would identify the edge of the ligamentum flavum once you identify the edge of the ligamentum flavum and i have the cranial end to the left and the caudal to the right the instruments are going from the caudal towards the cranial below the lamina and i am on the left side of the patient i go in may have little removed a little bit of the lamina identified that edge of the the lamina that i have taken out with my rongers and identified the overhang of the ligamentum flavum there is one area where it gets deficient you may go central as a lot of people do i tend to go just above the edge superior edge of the ligamentum flavum detaching it from the under surface of the lamina above having done that you need something to hook and turn it around you may use a ball tip retractor or you may use a modification of the one number that i have now modified and use it very very commonly which is bent i just flip it in and turn it by 180 degrees and lift off the lamina having done that i could either cut it with a 15 number knife or i could just detach it from the central side it comes off fairly easily then with a small pointed forceps tissue holding i lift it up and detach the ligamentum flavum there are some people who love and keep the ligamentum flavum the choice is yours having done that we have to now go for the nerve root we don't look for the disc we look for the nerve root the operation is nerve root decompression so this is a double angled root retractor which needs to find the shoulder of the nerve root so we have to go and expose the entire nerve root as far as possible and then gently retract the nerve root to identify the annulus a few patients will have an extruded fragment or a protruded fragment which pops out there are others who may need a formal annulotomy a foraminotomy i do prior to getting my disc out i identify that whole root because my operation is nerve root decompression having said that there are times where you are foraminal or close to the foramen in a narrow canal where you may have to do a spine annulotomy and detach the annulus and pick out the nucleus from within restrict the annulotomy to a single slit maximum being 4 to 6 mm more than 6 mm annulotomy has a higher incidence of recurrence within the first few years 
then use these fine disc punches the straight one and the curved one to pick up the nuclear fragment having said that then get your pen field in and look for any more fragments pick up that disc fragment and that disc fragment should match that google map in your brain if you've imagined it to be 2 cm it has to be somewhere between 1.8 to 2.2 cm when you take it out please remember if it doesn't match with what you have in your mind you got to look for more remove all the loose fragments and check the mobility of the root completely do only a bumpectomy and loose fragment removal today we don't do a complete nucleotomy or a radical annulotomy we stop doing curettage of the end plates in fact it causes increase in sepsis and long term subsidence with significant back pain so just do offending fragment removal with complete nerve root clearance the operation is nerve root release and clearance it's not a complete discectomy can there be bleeding yes how do we achieve hemostasis be very proficient in using the bipolar there are epidural veins which can be easily identified with your loops with illumination and with the microscope use suction and pick up all those roots a little more bleeding you can take care of gel foam pledgets and put them there till you get hemostasis some people choose to keep the gel foam some people choose to take it out choice is yours literature says it could be kept in there finally that's the scar a summary of the procedure you put in the retractor go in identify and do a small laminotomy identify the herniated nucleus pulposus remove the extruded or protruded fragment decompress the nerve root completely einstein the genius said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results however in micro lumbar decompression like many things in orthopedic surgery and spine surgery the corollary may be true we must understand that we have to have our foolishness and follow it our hunger should not stop short of excellence or perfection please understand it's very unforgiving as a spine surgeon but at times it's the most gratifying of procedures in orthopedics triumph and turmoil will be a part of the game as a spine surgeon and self doubt will creep in into every spine surgeon's life on a regular basis how then does one keep one's head above the water please understand don't let the noise of others opinion drown your inner voice have the courage to follow your heart it somehow knows what you truly are and want to become everything else is secondary opinions are not facts stop worrying about what people think about you stay hungry stay foolish remain a learner all your life all of us do not have equal talent but all of us have an equal opportunity to develop our talent i request the biggest success mantra is that the future belongs to the competent attend meetings train yourself get good get better and be the best thank you very much for a patient here